we shall start. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my session, The Colored Brain Communication. Uh, truly, this is very amazing because I'm getting at this moment about 86 people who already signed in, and uh, there are still people in the waiting room. Uh, I'm very excited, actually. Uh, to be very frank, this is my first time doing it virtual live to everybody, and truly welcome, welcome to my session. And uh, let me just hang on, uh, just let me share my screen. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, this is the session that uh, I will walk you through in this one hour to explain what Color Brain is, uh, is about. Yeah, and uh, before we start, all those who are here, I will be getting a poll from you in a short while, but before we do that, uh, let me just uh, introduce myself to you. I'm Lily Lau, the Master Certified for Color Brain and Directive Communication Psychology from Malaysia. And uh, if you have seen this picture here, if you see this, uh, hang on. Uh, if you see this picture here, this is uh, Arthur Kamazi, uh, my guru, and uh, this happened in 2018 where I was awarded by him for the best master trainer and the best business partner. And I've been in this uh, directive communication psychology training for the last 15 years. So uh, this program, Directive Communication and Colored Brain, has bring me tremendous success, and this is where I... I rediscover myself, what my strength is, what my strength is, and who am I, truly. And because of that, I really believe in it, and that's why I am doing this, and I would like to introduce to you all. Okay, uh, these are some of my programs, and uh, here, if you see this, this was an interview that was conducted by NTV7. Okay, and uh, this one, uh, okay, this was an interview that happened about three, four years ago, uh, with Dr. Asma. Dr. Asma, are you here? I think she's here. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, this is one of my training workshops and here is a one of my certification workshop. Okay, come, let me quickly go through it. And uh, I would like to know who is in this class. And before I do that, hang on, hang on. Okay, I, what I'd like you to do, uh, I'd like to know who is in this class, what is your profession, can you just click, tick which one are you, so I have an idea, the profile, the background of this group of people. Okay. Okay. Any more? Any more people? I'll give you another 10 seconds. Anyone else? Okay, if not, then I will close the polling. Okay, and I will share the results. Let's see who is this group of people. Right, so what we have here, 25% of, of you all are trainers, coaches, facilitators, and consultants. And then 11% are HR practitioner, recruiter, or interviewers. 4% are from the L&D. 7% are the senior management, business owner, and CEO. 12% are teachers, lecturers, and educators. And 42% are others. Can I request, uh, okay, those who are training organizers, you can just put the L&D. Yeah, can I just have a request? Those who put others, can you write on the text chat, uh, what is your profession? So I have an idea. Those who put others at the bottom here, which is 42%, can you just put, okay, BI, developer, QA manager, advertising and marketing, pharmaceutical, quality manager, 
Thank you very much. Quality manager, account analyst, conference producer. Wow. Okay, pharmaceutical. Okay, accountant. Yep. Any more? QC, teacher. Teacher is in there. Uh, lecturer. Okay, L&D. Fine. Pharmaceutical. Okay, I have uh, quite a few who are from the pharmaceutical here. Any more? Software developer. Okay, currently in the learning journey of development. Okay, insurance agent, online business, accountant. Okay, payroll team lead. Wow. Okay, I'm getting a whole spectrum of the people who are joining. Okay, any more, any more? If not, then I shall, I shall close the poll. Retiree. Okay, thank you very much. Now is the best time. Okay, I will stop sharing. Thank you for all, for all who have contributed. Okay, come, let's continue. For this one hour, what are the key takeaways? Uh, what you will learn from me is why we see things differently. I'll play with you a small little game. What are the four colored brains, which is, I believe, will be the major reason why you are here. You would like to find out what color brain is and the characteristics and benefits of each of the color. Right. I will play with you a simple activity. Now, can you write on the text chat? Can you see the two arrows, which is on your left hand side? And in the text chat, can you type what color of the arrow is pointing down and what color of the arrow is pointing up? Can you type on the text chat? Okay. Blue down. Red up. Okay. Okay. Well, it's a simple question. Okay, it's a simple question. No brainer here. Everybody just got it right. Correct. Thank you. So now what I'm going to do here, if you see, if you look at me carefully, if you look at me carefully, right, I'm going to wear these colored glasses. Do I look good? Right? I'm going to wear these blue colored glasses. And what happened? What do you think? If I look at the arrows, do I still see the blue arrow as blue and the red arrow as red? What do you think the answer is? Can you just write on the text chat? Color changes? Change to what? How? Okay, blue is gone. Red, uh, red is now purple. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Purple. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is I will show you the slide of what I really see, yeah? Okay. Sorry friends, I think we are having a little bit of technical issue here. Somehow it's like Uh, okay, friends, some, I don't know what happened. My screen is jammed. Anyone got any suggestion? I cannot click. I cannot.
Lily, you can restart your PowerPoint. Try it. Maybe it's stuck there. Restart PowerPoint. Uh. Yeah. Close, close your presentation and then open again. Uh, okay, I have to figure out how do I do that you know, to close my presentation. Uh, minimize, uh, you put zoom, uh, minimize first, don't exit, but just minimize and then close your PowerPoint and open it again. Close my PowerPoint. Close it totally, yeah, and then open it again because it may be jammed there. Okay, now, sorry guys, technical error, technical issues, this is what I'm most afraid of actually. Uh, so what happened, if I wear the blue glasses, yeah, and if you look at the left side here, this is exactly what happened to the red arrows and, blue ar and, the, and the blue arrows. The blue appears to be very light, whereas the red appears to be darkish. Can you all see that? Can you all see that? Yeah? Okay, now what happened? For the same arrow, I'm wearing a red glasses now. What color do you think the red and the blue arrows will turn into? Can you all just write quickly on the text chat just to give me a very, very quick answer? Purple, green, red. Blue becomes purple, red is red. Okay, okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, now let me show you what happened to the color. Okay, this is... Oh dear. Let's jam again. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so do you get that uh, analogy? Do you understand what is that? What I'm seeing here is, when you are wearing your colored glasses, when you wear a red or the blue over red, and you look at the, the color of the arrows, which is red and blue, they don't appear red and blue anymore. Oh yeah, and by the way, I just recall, right? Uh, let's have uh, Davison here. Davison, can you just wear the red and the blue? Uh, Davidson, where are you? I'm here, Lily. Can you see me? Yep. Can you uh, screen yourself? Uh, video? Yeah, my video is on. Okay. Can you look at the two, two uh, red and the blue? What do you see? Okay. So when I look at the blue, the, the arrow down is uh, almost non-existent. Mm -hmm. I see a dark version of the arrow up. Yeah. On the right side is the other way around. Um, the down arrow is very clear, but mm -hmm. the up arrow is almost non-existent. It's non-existent, right? Right? Can you see? It's very, very light in shade. It's still there. It is still there. And I have circled it. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Davidson. Thank you. Okay. So what happened here is, this is what we call the colored glasses syndrome. And all of us, although we are looking at the same thing, but we do get different perspective. So the question here is, what color are your glasses? Now, I am wearing a pair of glasses, and this is my real glasses, physical. And a few of you all here are also wearing glasses. Some could be wearing contact lens. However, those who are not wearing any glasses, do you realize that each and every one of us 
do see things in different perspective, right? So the question here is, what really are our colored glasses? It is, it is like an invisible, you know, colored glasses inside Earth. And this whole thing, it is due to this, our genetic brain makeup that we have that causes us to see things in different perspective. Now, this uh, uh, colored brain was discovered by Arthur Kamazi. He was the founder and he did some studies. And what happened here is that it is based on the wiring system that is inside us, right? And what happened here is that you are born with it. You are born with this genetics wiring system. And when you think there is one certain pattern in us, and this pattern that we would like to know is called colored brain. Yeah? So far so good? Uh, do you all get it? Can you just write yes if you understand? Thank you very much. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. All of yours put yes. So you all got it. So far so good. Yeah? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, people still answering that they get it. Okay, so now here, okay, there are four types of uh, processes here. We have the red, we have the, the green, we have the blue and we have the purple okay and uh, for the red it is called linear as the term the red green people are very straight line processing whereas the green is chaotic or the other word that i use is called random yeah and then you have blue blue is intuitive and then you have purple which, which is relational what i'm going to do here is i will go through one by one and explain what the characteristics of each color and maybe later on you can you can tell me what color do you think you are okay now this is the image or the infographic of how a red brain process information and uh, normally what happens here is a red brain to them everything has to be very structured just like when you need to build a house when you need to build a house, where do you start first? You need to start with the foundation. Once you have the foundation, then you build the pillar. And once you have the pillar, you build the wall. And once you have the wall, then you build the roof, right? And in building a house, I don't think you, I mean, I do not know, I'm not an architect, but truly, you know, without the foundation, without the pillars, your house will not be strong. Then the last, it has to be the roof to cover up, right? So the whole thing here is everything is straight line. And for a red brain person, they based on facts, they based on logic, and they need to see it from all this perspective. Okay, and if you look at this infographic, it looks like your organizational chart, agree with me? Your op chart, yeah? Right, and it looks like, you know, it is also a workflow. When you have a workflow, what normally do you do? Right? You'll ask you a question, and from a question, if you answer yes, you go right, and you answer no, you go left. And if you are on the right side, yes, they'll ask you another question, and you go uh, on and on and on. And if at one point you say that I don't know, right, the workflow will say that, okay, now you have to start again from the beginning. There is a linear straight line, and everything is very structured. So... In the thought process of a red brain, do you see this uh, picture at the bottom here, right? In the thought process, I here, I here means information. For red brain people, they need to get some information, yeah? Information that are facts driven, that they need to do their analysis. And once they have the information, here, the one with the magnifying glass here, uh, they are analyzing, yeah, which means a red brain, they spend quite a lot of time analyzing. That means their brain literally is thinking. Now, this can be a big project where a red brain needs to spend time thinking, right? Or it can be just a 30 seconds question, you give it to the red brain. But what I can tell you, 
in the brain of this person, he or she, you know, the brain is running some processing, you know, it's trying to run some figures, trying to run some facts and trying to analyze it before coming up with the decision. Now, if you look at this last part here, uh, you can see like a, a, an icon of the people running. This means that uh, action, action is taken. So a red brain will not take any action until he gets certain facts, until he analyzes uh, what you know, he thinks he can analyze. So this is the uh, thought process of a red brain. Okay, come, can I move on? Okay, now this is the green brain. Okay, the word that is given to describe green is chaotic or random. Now, you may think, hmm, chaotic, then it is chaos. Well, in that sense, it is chaos, but in the way for someone who is green brain, who is green brain, they do not have a systematic way of organizing their thought. So it is all very random in various ways. Yeah, and, in, and as a person, a green brain is very action driven because green, a green brain person thinks better while he or she is doing. That means this person is kinesthetic. And uh, what happened here is, okay, if you look at, if you look at the bottom part here, this I means a uh, green, uh, green brain will take one, one little piece of information and immediately this green brain will take action. The action here in reality could be pick up the phone, call a friend, ask the friend, what shall I do? What do you think of this idea? And the green brain, the green brain person, as he or she gets some feedback from the other person, they will know What's the Lily, I'm sorry to interrupt. I think you're muted. You have muted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Lily, you're good you. now. You are good now. Just now you are unmute. You're okay. You're okay now. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm really struggling with this technology, but I'm trying my best. Okay, thank you. Let's move on. Okay, sorry guys, can you all uh, now see the screen? Okay, now let me repeat about green brain now uh, because it has been interactive. And uh, overall, this green brain person is big picture, chaotic and action driven. These are the keywords to describe about a green brain. And what a green brain do, normally he or she, he won't look too much into details. He will just straight go into action. And within, in the process of doing the action, the green brain will know what to do next because he or she is an experiential person while doing it he will have idea what to do next and next and next 
So in this process, a green brain will be, while in action, I will analyze a little bit more. And while I'm analyzing, I want to test it out. And while I'm testing it out, I want to uh, try it out again. So it is a lot about in action in the actual doing process. Yeah. And a green brain in, in by nature is not a very organized person. So this person could be very messy in real life all over the place. Yeah. If you see anyone of that kind, then maybe that will resonate to you that, you know, this person could be green brain. Yeah. Then the next one is purple. Now, if you see purple, there's a lot of eye at the bottom. And to a purple brain, information is king. For a purple brain, they need lots and lots of data. And a purple brain are able, is able to connect all the little information into a big piece. For example, uh, 1,000 pieces of jigsaw puzzle, that small little pieces that you have, a purple brain person will be able to figure it out and they connect through data and from the data, they get to see the big picture. Yeah, so for a purple, information is king. And what happened here, if you look at this bottom here, there are lots of I, 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 I. So for a purple brain, it's like, you know, okay, I will need to uh, research for this project. And after researching, this purple brain will go through, you know, and they are the one who will read the book from the front to the back, page by page. And as they are reading it, they will collect the information and they will uh, analyze it in the way how to make the information connect. So their brain works like a huge database storage and they are very neat and tidy in person, very organized, and they do arrange all the information properly. Yeah, so if you are looking for something and you don't know where to find it, the best is to ask a purple brain person because he or she will be able to tell you where to find it. Okay, so because the purple brain spend a fair time looking for the information, they know where the information is, they do not need to spend too much time analyzing it. So for them, analyzing is just to confirm and reconfirm. And once they are done, they will go into action. Are we okay so far? Are we okay so far? Okay, thank you. So let's move on. And I still have the last one, which is, which is, the blue. Okay, thank you. Now, now the blue brain over here, the word is intuitive. And when you when you hear the word intuitive, it means that you know this person has six sense. All of us do have six sense, but a blue brain intuit intuition is much much stronger than the rest than the other three colors. Okay, so this blue brain, anything, everything he or she will feel first. He or she will feel first. And for example, if this blue brain comes in to this workshop for the first time, they will be doing a lot of scanning. Who is in here? Are there any of my friends? Are there anyone that I know? So this blue brain person will do that kind of scanning. And if you look at the infographic, unlike the other three colors, the lines are kind of curvy. Do you see it's curvy? Right? So what it means here is everything is situational. It all depends. It all depends what the environment is, who are, in, who are in the room, who are the people, what is the culture, what is the overall feeling of that moment. That's how a blue brain will process. And the blue brain will know what to do in that instant of the moment while in that, in, in that situation. Because he or she every, will will process it based on the intuition, yeah? So if you look at this uh, uh, thought process at the bottom here, there are two lines. Whereas the, all the other three colors, there is only one line. Do you know what is it? What does it represent? Well, this shows us blue brain is a natural multitasker. So it's just like your brain, right? For the other three colors, 
they may say that, oh, I do, I can multitask too. Yes, most of us or many of us can multitask, but the natural multitasker is a blue brain. Why? Because a blue brain, the inside the brain itself, they are already multitasking. Okay. At this moment here, a blue brain who is sitting in here, she or he or she could be focusing, looking at me. And another part of the brain at the back, right, he could be analyzing what I'm going to have for dinner tonight, for example. What I'm going to do for this. And he, he will be thinking something else. So the brain is kind of like compartmentalized. It is a little bit exaggerating, but just to simplify it, it's a little, it, it, it is of that kind of uh, uh, imagination. Whereas the other three colors, the brain must focus one thing at a time. And if they do a few things, they just get disrupted. But a blue brain is able to do that. Okay? It is a, a, a talent, a natural talent. But the downside of it, a blue brain can be easily distracted if you think about it. Right? Now, the other three colors doesn't mean that they cannot be distracted. Yes, they can be. But if they want to focus on one thing, they can. And they will focus it very well. Right? Uh, Okay, let me just read here. Uh. Lily, if you find a moment to go back even at the end of the session, please allow me to... Okay, okay. Now, uh, let to just, uh, those who just join in, let me just repeat this. Uh. Uh, this session is recorded and it will be uploaded uh, in YouTube. However, if you, if you need it, if you need the recording, write to me and I'll send it to you personally. Okay, so far so good? So far, so good? How's it going, everyone? Okay, good. So we can continue. Any question? Any question? Okay, good. So let's continue. Okay, now that you have heard my explanation for the four colors, Anyone here already knew that, oh, this is my color, I'm red, I'm green, I'm blue, or I'm purple. Anyone here already knew what is your color? Can you just write in the text chat if anyone here already knows that this is your color? Wow, I have so many people already put that. Yes, I'm green, I'm blue, I'm purple. Okay, I was told that I'm going, okay, someone told you that you're green, okay, okay, uh, right, right, between red and purple, okay, mix of blue and purple, okay, okay, can you have a mix of colors? Yeah, that's a very, very good question. Okay, let me answer that. When we talk about colored brain, it is genetic, so the key point here is that you are born with one color. Right? And what happens as we go along? The other three colors is nurtured. You learn how to process the other three colors. If we do a profiling of you, we would see all four colors inside you. But the key point here is in color brain, we want to discover what is your genetic. Because the genetic is the real you. Genetic is where you are at your best. The genetic is where you are most natural in your own way. Whereas the other three colors, somehow you learn it. Now, let me ask you this question. How many of you like maths, mathematics as a subject during your school days, and it's your favorite subject and you score? Perfect. A with it. Can I see a show of hands? Wow, okay, I have uh, Alia here. Wow, wow, very good. Many of you, okay, one say not me. Yeah, I love Max. Okay, very good. Max is my favorite. Max, not me. Okay, now, those who say that Max is not me, did you 
do your best to study and still pass it, right? Assuming that you have to do your Form 5 exam, SPM, right? We have to pass. Every one of us have to. So what do we do? Even though maths is not your favorite subject, wow, some person say you almost died. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, what happened here is that not everyone can excel in all subjects. Do you agree with me? Although there are people who score 10 A's, 12 A's, 15 A's, I do not know how they do it. There are some subjects which you really like it, you enjoy doing it, and you are really good at it. But there are also some subjects Yes, I learn, but I don't like it. I'm like forcing myself. I'm like, oh, you know, every time when I see this, you know, homework, every time when I have to do this, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, you know, uh, feel so frustrated, feel so, you know, so helpless, and yet you have to submit your homework, and yet you have to pass your test, you know, everything. So in the end, what do you do? We force ourselves to learn, right? Some of you scrape through, some of you, you, you force it and you did it very well, the excellence. Some maybe didn't even do well. Well, the question here is, this is where the different colored brain comes in. Those who like one subject and they really like it and enjoy, it could be because your brain makeup is that for that color and it is very natural. Whereas the other subjects you struggle, right? is because it is not your natural, but you can learn. Do you get my point here? You can learn. So in all of us here, we would have a mixture of all four colors, but what is your natural? Yeah. And uh, okay, let me turn on to the next slide. In a normal classroom that I do, my participants will get to do this colored brain communication inventory. We have online version, we also have hard copy version, right? And once you run through those questions, you will see the graph, yeah? And from the graph, you will, we will be able to tell you which is your genetic, which are your other second colors and which is an area that you are not, uh, that is your weakness, right? And this is just to give an example. And for example, this graph here is also a graph that indicates which category of people that you have potential conflict. So this is through an assessment, we are able to uncover this, yeah? Uh, in this classroom, I have to say that no, I'm unable to do this for you. Maybe if you come to my class, uh, we will be able to do that for you. But what I have installed is actually a small little game. And uh, I will put you in breakout rooms. And before we go into that, can I get all of you, please screenshot this slide. Can you use your handphone to screenshot this slide first before I put you all into your breakup rooms? Okay. Have you all, have you all uh, taken, taken the shot? Done? Okay, thank you. Now, what I'm going to do here, I will give you the question. In the breakup rooms, uh, I will put five, five person in each room. And you will discuss, you will discuss, this is your question here. Can you also uh, take a screenshot? Can you also take a screenshot? Okay. Please take a screenshot. Everyone is supposed to choose one card, explain why you like the card, and among the five of you, try and see are there any similarities or differences in the selection. Are you okay? So once you are okay, I will put you into the, sorry, I'll put you in the breakup rooms.
Mira, está bien. Sí, sí. Se va a usar más. Sí. Lily, you're okay? Are you okay, Lily? Yes, yes. Good. Are you in your breakout room? No, like, it's okay. I don't join my breakout room. Oh, this is Nuru. Uh, am I, am I? No, no, no. I, I, don't, I don't join. It's okay. Just want to focus on uh, helping you only. Oh, thank you. You're doing good so far. Really, uh, no, no, you're doing good. Just keep up the momentum. 15 minutes to go. Where is my group? Hi, are you out from your room? We were in a group and then um, the it was 60 seconds and then we we're out. Uh -huh. I'm back to I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> Guys, we are not able to discuss. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, in the middle of discussion, being kicked out. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're in the yeah. discussion, and then that's it. <laughs> Selecting the pictures <laughs> that we wanted, and that's it. <laughs> so, unless can we go back in or out? Uh... Okay. How you want to go back? No, no. Uh, this is just uh, for uh, for. Uh, 
for fun, you know, just for a few minutes and uh, have a feel of it, what is it like, you know, to play with the cards. I'm sorry it didn't turn out well for some of you all. Uh, we will have to continue already. Uh, anyway, can I just hear from one or two of you all, how was it in the, um, in the breakout room? Oh, yeah. Can I hear that? Can I hear that? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, That's much better. So maybe those who want to share can unmute themselves. Yeah, yeah. correct. Right? Uh, one or two person. I don't have, I only have about 10 minutes left. Maybe yeah, one I can or two. Go first, uh, Lily, if you want. So David would like to share your experience. Okay, in my group, there was uh, four of us yeah. uh, who, were, who were participating. And uh, funnily, uh, three of us picked uh, card number six. Which is the guy who was drowned in um, with a lot of papers? Wow! And one of our uh, one of our team members picked uh, card number one. Wow. Right. So for card number one, her explanation was that uh, people in the card look very happy uh, as a family, and they look very contented. You know, so they they were um, that was what she single handedly picked, and the rest of the three guys, including me, we picked um, six. All of us for some reason out of the seven mm. and our reasons were all the same so very similar uh overworked because of mco new different new things that we need to do and uh yeah so things to do with uh okay. Okay. Thank you, Dave. right uh anyone else want to share a very quick one one uh, one minute. In one minute, can you? Anyone else? Would like yeah, to I think uh, for group number twenty-one, uh, break up room number twenty-one, we had uh, Bernard and we had uh, uh, I think it was uh, Bernard Lim and uh, uh, Adrian, Adrian Yap and Prince was there. Uh, Prince got no time to pick up her card, uh, his card, and then uh, I think me and uh, Aiden picked up the number one, which is uh, more into family and harmony. Whereas uh, Bernard picked up uh, number four, card number four, which is more into, I think, job. Um, yeah. Number four, I can multitask. Mm. I can have a holiday and still work. <laughs> and then uh, it can, then I'm in, in the office, I'm wearing a jacket, actually, and a poolside. <laughs> Zoom call, so, Zoom yeah, call. So, so, it's very, so it's very intuitive. It's very intuitive. I go with the flow. Yeah. Uh, anything, anything goes. So you know, in that sense, uh, I'm a blue guy. Ah. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, if anything, uh, anyone want to make any other comments, uh, we can please type in the text chat, or if not, later on after this session, uh, you can text me uh, uh, personally. If not, I uh, shall we proceed with the session? Are we okay? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we are almost at the end of the session. And uh, what are the benefits for color brain? There are five benefits. And number one, personal development. I myself, I gained tremendous benefits from this. And this is where I found my natural talent. Just to give you a very, very short story of myself, I was working for 18 years under PricewaterhouseCoopers. I can tell you uh, in my last uh, five years in Pricewaterhouse, I was uh, like a walking zombie, didn't really enjoy my work and I don't know, uh, you know, what was uh, the, I mean, uh, my, my big, uh, my, my personal goal and all that, I, I did that, I was searching until I discovered what color paint is. And through that, when I discovered my natural color, I started to replan and re-strategize myself. And what you are seeing here, me, after 15 years, is where I, I, I'm so thankful that I found myself and I know 
where my natural talents are and I am enjoying what I'm doing. Yeah. So number one is your personal development. Number two is self-realization. This self-realization is more like, you know, uh, you know what you are good at and you know what you are not good at and don't be too worried about it. None of us are perfect, right? What is it something that, you know, you don't enjoy doing and what is it something that you like or you enjoy doing? And do you also expect other people to be like you? The question here is, all of us are made differently. So once you understood this colored brain concept, you are able to see each other, each one of us, uh, in different colors and how do we work together and set each other up for success. The question here is, we are looking at success. We are looking at the best part of ourselves. Which part is it that I'm good at? And that's where you contribute and you do your best in those areas. Right? It can, it can also help you to improve your relationship. I have so many testimonials from my participants. People, you know, uh, whose relationship with their, uh, sorry, with their office staff, with their bosses, and to many, even the personal relationship with their spouses, with their mom, with their children. I have so many of such. Okay? And we also use this a lot in team building and leadership. And in fact, the color of a leader is very important because it tells us what is his natural way of leading. There are so many templates in this world now, but which one really suits you? And to find that, the best is go and discover your color brain first and from there, you will be able to find that template better, right? And lastly, conflict resolution. And knowing your color, instead of arguing about it, you know, I don't argue. What we do here is that we embrace, we accept one another, and we try to understand and see from the other person's perspective, why is he or she different? And with that, it helps to improve relationship. And instead of arguing, we are creating better bonds. So it helps to overcome understanding and even to the extent of uh, using the right talent with to the right people. So we don't in, go into the wastage of the talent. Yeah, okay. And in summary, these are the three keywords. Uh, just to briefly run through, the red brain type are the ones who, are, who require structure, who's, who, who think long-term and they always must be very clear what is the end in mind, yeah? Uh, green brain is the action type, short term, they will stimulate thinking, they are the type who starts a lot of project, but they may not end up completing it, yeah? And then you got the blue, the blue will be the people's people, they connect, they are very good at organizing, they, their sensory system is so good that, you know, they're able to feel, you know, and know and sense, you know, with all that. And, and in fact, you know, uh, a lot of uh, blue brain are very good HR, right? And then you have the purple. The purple type are very good to do things that are nitty gritty, uh, you know, even like IT or projects because they are able to make things into very, very good systems. Yeah, and they make things practical. So that would be the key three, uh, three keywords to summarize, summarize each of the color. Yeah, and okay, before I go into that, is there any questions? Is there any questions? Hey Lee, I found one in the chat box you might want to take. Um, you mentioned that the color is genetically linked. Can we develop the color style? Say for example, I am weak in green, but would like to develop my style into this. Okay, to answer that question, uh, yes, we can develop other colors. And actually, most of us, we develop second or third color from the environment. So assuming, uh, let's say, you know, you are a green brain person. Green brain by nature, you, you, you are active, you like to, uh, you know, uh, doesn't like structure, doesn't like, you know, uh, to be given too many rules and all that. And somehow, you are in this cultural environment where you need to, uh, be very systematic, you need to do things properly, plan a lot and that kind. Because you are doing a job, somehow you learn. Because you have to learn, if not you can't survive. 
or you can't you know, sustain that job. And once you learn that, you develop that second color, right? I also sometimes ask my participants, are you the same person at home and at work? What do you think is your answer? Is it a yes or a no? Yeah, some person may answer me yes, some person may answer me no. The question here is why, right? Now, if you think about it, if you answer me no, that means at work, you are using a different color green because that is the color that is required to get your job done. It is required. Whereas once you're out from your work, you don't need to play that role and you go into to be yourself, which at the end of the day, right, uh, that's where, you know, that's the real self. Uh, it could be a Sunday, it could be, you know, after five and all that, and you find yourself more relaxed. When you're always relaxed, it is your natural that is in place. That is at work. Uh, are we okay? Sorry. Okay, now there are many questions here. What color type are suitable for creative ideation and strategic planning function? For creative, um, it could be blue, it could be a mixture with green also. But for strategic planning function, you need to have red. A red will come in place. So that means this person may need to have uh, either, either blue or green as a genetic and you need to have a very strong red to back up. Okay. Uh, now there's one question here. Huh? When you mention color is genetic, can you develop a color style? Say, for example, I'm weak, but would be able. Okay, now, overall, over the years, you can develop the color. But to do that, you need to know what is your color first, your genetic color. Then only you know how to develop it. If not, you are just doing it, what you are doing it, and you don't know which is which. Yeah, so this is where uh, the knowledge of your color being do come in. Okay. Someone asked me, Jiva asked me, what color are you, Lili Lao? May I ask? Ha ha ha. This is a $5 million question. Anyone want to pay me to answer you? <laughs> okay. Can I, I answer that? <laughs> it's $5 million. I want to answer, can I? <laughs> uh, uh, later, I will tell you that uh, if you want to text me in person. Okay, now, uh, due to time, I have to quickly uh, wrap up already. I hope this has been a, a good session to all of you all. I was actually very eager to share with you some of my coming up sessions. Uh, but having said that, right, I will go straight. Uh, any questions, please uh, text me or uh, send me an email. If not, then, you know, be, uh, hang on, let me, uh, anyone need a bit more time to write down my number and my email? Okay. If not, what I'm going to do here, I need to share with you because this is part of the 40 hours virtual learning festival that I'm doing. Uh, today is day two. There are many, many other sessions that's uh, coming up. Please go in and check it out. Uh, who are the speakers coming so that, you know, uh, participate because it is all free from all of us. And lastly, before you leave, I would like uh, to get your uh, cooperation to go into this uh, uh, sorry, to go into this uh, evaluation and give me an evaluation. Hang on, so what I'm going to do here is I will put here. Okay. Okay, that's about all I have to share. Please, uh, we will, we will uh, communicate offline from here. If not, then I got to close because I have a uh, next speaker who will also need to come in from now onwards. Anything, do share with me and I hope you enjoy it. And truly, it has been an amazing to have all of you all to spend the time with me. Thank you very much. And truly, have a good day. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.